I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, aka The Rig Doctor, and today I'm building a rig for my good buddy, David Ryan Harris. David and I go way back. He's been buying pedals and employing our services for almost a decade, yet I've never built a complete rig for him. David has been planning this rig out for years and has been putting an amalgamation of pedals together kind of per the session or de jour to make a rig to suit the needs of the song, but he wants to consolidate everything have it all in one centralized place that's just gonna live in his studio. So I'm gonna be heading to David Ryan Harris's place. I'm gonna be picking up this pedal board for him, all the pedals. He's gonna walk us through a few of the choices that he's gonna be making, but let's go over and head to David's studio at his house, and let's get this thing going. David Ryan Harris. All right, welcome. Yeah, so, so talk to me. We've, we've kind of been exchanging texts about this, but wh where do we end up? Well, a couple things. I got this buffer. Okay. And it's got a it's got a loop in it for, like, fuzzes. Okay. And I've been using this pinwheel by um, Fender for my roto thing. Cool. But I think I'm going to go back to my Digitech. So we just have to figure out how to lay it all out so that it all makes sense and fits. I'm actually pretty excited about this, uh, having a two-story apartment now. Right. Uh, figure out which things go up top and which things go on the bottom, but I think it's going to fit. Currently, what is the signal path? As signal path is buffer, Cooper Arcade, uh, compressor, volume pedal, dirt, uh, course, vibrato, kilobyte, delay, memory man, this verb, this, and this, and out. What about in terms of insert points? We kind of talked about this. Where might you want some of those? Well, I thought I would want one at the beginning, but with that little loop at the beginning of that buffer, right? I don't need one there. I mean, would you want it before and after the volume pedal so you could before add and some, after, yeah, yeah, you could add in the auxiliary stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do that, and then this is all mono, right? This is all in front of the amp. All mono in front of the amp. One other thing that I would like to do on the side, this JHS, um, their compressor, okay, has an XLR out. Got it. If I could somehow get that XLR kind of on the, you'll probably do like a- um, Into the interface box? Yeah, into the interface box. Do you care if that's TRS? I don't. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it, man. All right, it's beautiful. All right, we will relieve you. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> that's it. All right, let me figure out what dirt pedal. A couple of things that I want to notate before we get started. We are using our Tour Elite pedal board. Luckily, this was able to meet the needs for his particular studio rig. This is gonna be something that David is just using inside in his studio itself. But enough of me talking, I'm gonna get into the build. You're gonna to get to see it as it comes together and we'll do a few check-ins as we get to certain points naturally in the course of the build. The way I approach every build when we're getting started is I like to do a lot of time on the layout. Spending time on the layout is doing your upfront homework. It's making sure that everything has a place on the board and that we're accounting for it. That means you're putting the plugs in the pedals in advance to make sure that there's enough room for clearance on the left and right and also on the top if you're using any sort of DC power that's going in on the top. You're accommodating everything that there's going to need to be. Once I have that decided, I'm definitely going to be using 3M Dual Lock. This is the best way to take the actual pedal and connect it to the pedal board itself. I like using two different styles of Dual Lock Velcro, the SJ3550, which is a more open pattern of loops, and then the SJ3551, which is a denser pattern of loops. By offsetting them like this, I find that you get the best possible lock of the two mated sides. Next, going to the holy trinity of tone, we always like to start using a high quality isolated power supply, and David has provided us with two Strymon Zumas. This ensures that every single device on the board has an isolated power, and we're gonna be powering not only some high powered stuff like the Electro Harmonics Memory Man using two of the 12 volt outputs on the Zuma and wiring those in series to get 24 volts. If you wanna see how to do that, you can check out a video that I'm gonna link above and in the description so you can learn how to do that yourself if you need to. 
And we've also created an extension power strip that powers the expression pedal that's designed by Digitech because this takes a thousand milliamps or one amp at nine volt AC. In order to accommodate that, we're required to use their power supply. I did shorten it to length, but we have a cool feature that we did where we used the actual power wall ward itself, put it upside down, and then wired it into a power strip. And we route it all neatly into the supply, coming in at a few different key points in the routing. And you can see that we just use these KobeCon 2.1 millimeter plugs that terminate into the Zuma keeps it really nice and neat and we label exactly where everything is so if David ever needs to troubleshoot this he knows exactly where the source of each pedal is powered. From there we're going to move on to the next part of the holy trinity of tone which is high quality soldered cables. We're using all of the Vertex Mogami 2314 cable with SP400 and SPS4 plugs from Square Plug. These are excellent plugs. Which I give a tutorial on how to make yourself. If you're interested in doing that, you can see that link in the description and above. Also, if you want to purchase these, we have them available for purchase in almost any conceivable length you can think of, in every single angle you can think of on our Reverb store. So check that out. If you want us to do it for you, we can do that. Alternatively, if you want to do it yourself, we also give you all those resources and we're implementing those exact same techniques to wire this neatly for David so that he has a crystal clear, very well assembled, excellent sounding low noise pedal board. Now the final part of the holy trinity here is using high quality buffers. Now I told you that we're going to use a combination of our buffers, the DIY buffers that we've talked about and those will be linked for you again in the description and above. And we're also combining that using another input buffer that David had sourced himself from 29 pedals which is a Una buffer. And this is a cool buffer because it allows you not only to have a high quality input buffer, but also has an effects loop in it and a bypass switch. So you can bring in outboard effects that are impedance sensitive like fuzzes and things like that, which is something that David would commonly use. And so this just gives him the most amount of flexibility and gives him some different EQs that he can add to the input buffer if he's changing instruments or using acoustic things like that. So I'm going to finish up wiring a few more cables. I think I got four more to solder up. Now we're going to bring this over to David, get his impressions. Uh, my name's David Brian Harris. I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for words. I just, um, I had all these pedals. I see that these pedals used to belong. To, well, they still belong to me. But uh, Uncle Mason put a board together for me, and I'm I'm just flabbergasted. I think it it looks amazing, but it's got the double the riser thing here, which is amazing. The power's underneath, um, super 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 clean. Um, I could never have done this. I would never have had the patience or know how. And basically, this board is like a, a studio board. I don't think I would ever tour with this board. It's just. Um, when I'm in the studio, I, I, I'm looking for weird sound. A lot of times I don't want uh, a Strat Blues sound or a heavy Les Paul sound. You know, I want things that um, are inspiring for me to play and something that kind of pulls a listener's ear, like, you know, so that you're like, oh, I feel like that has the attack of a guitar, but it doesn't really sound like a guitar. Um, and this kind of does a little bit of, you know, sort of traditional stuff. And then it also is um, inspiring to, you know, turn all these pedals on at one time and see what happens. Um, and a little bit about the approach to this pedal board, actually. Um, it's completely different than what I would do live. Basically when I'm in the studio, I don't do a lot of tap dancing. So I wanted lots of options that I didn't necessarily have to turn a bunch of stuff on or off at one time. That's kind of like, set up for an over, overdub, do that sound, and then that's kind of it. So um, I love this buffer. This, I love that it has a little EQ, um, sort of preset EQ bumps, depending on the guitar or whatever. So this is like a little high bump. this particular tone but the next is my trusty expression factory 
which I use for Leslie stuff. Then this Cooper Effects Arcades, which is my favorite, um, favorite new pedal as of late. Um, it takes these little, these little cards, these little things, right here, which are just uh, ripe to, to lose. They're just the right size to lose or wash in your pants. But each one of them does a, a separate, separate thing. And I, I don't really know what, um, I don't really know what I'm doing with the pedal. I just, I just turn knobs and make cool sounds, which is kind of, this pedal is like, it's a, it's like a randomizer for your life. For your guitar, you just put it in and it turn knobs, and uh, it happens to be on a cool sound at the moment. Get into a little dirt. First up is the ages. Love that. It's kind of bratty. I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of the the sort of the two screamer thing for what I do. Um, but this kind of the brown is like the best version of that kind of distortion for me. I'm gonna go uh, the JHS like compressed. I mean a um, uh, chorus and vibrato. This guy. sad i think that's the best 99 dollars the jhs pedals best 99 dollars you can spend if you're sad trusty uh boss rv 500 a lot of tones in here That's kind of my basic kind of springy vibe. What do I need to say about the LCAP? Do I even need to demo this? It's, it's just awesome. wrote a song <laughs> uh let's see let's do some uh compressor and normally i use the compressor for um like more sustain for like swell i don't really do funk compressor stuff And the compressor actually feeds a DI, um, which is, yeah, before the volume pedal. And so I can use that if I want to do like guitar rig or I don't know, some other in the box kind of situation. And then we have my trusty memory man. Um, I did extensive um, sort of shootouts to find a pedal that does what this pedal does because it's so ginormous. I can fit like four pedals in the space of that pedal, but nothing sounds like it. So, um, so here it is. It it's made the cut. 
Nothing sounds like that. Uh, I'm available for your shoegaze wedding band. I'm available. Then at the end of my signal chain, I think you're supposed to put this Jackson prism at the beginning of your signal chain, or so says Brad. But I like it at the end because I feel like it's kind of my final place to shape the tone before it gets to the amp. So a lot of times if it's too too thick or too thin, um, it's just really easy to kind of sort of fix it there. And also kind of goose the front end of the amp if need be, or cut the front end, uh, I mean, or cut the the volume going into the amp. So it's um, it's kind of my one of my desert island pieces. I feel like I will always have a prism on every board. <laughs> Let's say I like that sound, but it's a little thick, then it's just very easy to uh, get rid of the body. More body, you say? And it's kind of more than just like a, a, a low end sort of boost. It does really sort of add body to it to me. And then you can add top as well. And then also at the end, well, the very, very end is the deco, which I guess is pretty much designed to be like going to going to tape. So it's a great saturation and also a really good sort of slap. Uh, it gives sounds a little bit of presence and a little sort of aggression without being distorted. Um, the saturation does at least. There's just a little bit of hair on it. Pretty cool. Uh, and it does, you can get it even a little more dirty. So it's like slamming the front end of some tape. And then add the little slap on here. lots of pedals and uh i have a fear of commitment so i made sure that um there were audition loops put in here so that so that if i wanted to put one between um, before volume pedal after volume pedal before the drives and then kind of after the whole thing so i can um try new pedals in each of those spots without sort of messing up the integrity of this board which speaks very well to my um fear of pedal commitment um I'm really happy with the, you know, the choices that I've made on here. And I think I'll, I think I'll stay here for a while. Um, I may do a, uh, I have a, a tape delay that I use sometimes and it'll be easy to sort of pop that in there and a reverberato, which does like, um, sort of the harmonic tremolo. Um, and I think those are the only two things that I'm missing. I could not be happier with how aesthetically pleasing it is. First of all, because, you know, you have to you have to want to date the girl because, you know, like you, you have to be physically attracted to her to then find out that her work, her inner workings are super quiet. Um, everything's laid out in a way that really makes sense. I can't believe how quiet it is. There's no signal loss that I can that I can tell. And there's you know, we're not going through any loops. It's all just like pedal into pedal into pedal into pedal. And so I've you know, done enough pedal boards to know that that's a recipe for a huge loss and tone and all kinds of buzzes and, and stuff like that. And it's just, um, it's super, super quiet. It's definitely the most pro situation I've had. Um, I've had it in a home studio by far. I couldn't, couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm.